Hey YouTube, so we're going to do some chronograph testing. I've got the 362 that I've modified into a 367 that they show in a 2023 catalog but have not released. I have the Crossman steel breech and I installed a 26 inch long Crossman barrel. So it should up the velocity a bit. And then for control, I bought my uh, Benjamin 397 out and it's saying at 10 pumps 1100 fps but you know that's not going to be right with uh you have to use some type of alloy pellet which i looked into those are kind of expensive so what we'll use for pellets today are these excite uh, i think they're may h and n they're 7.87 grain well then we'll jump up to 10.5 grain crossman premieres and then we'll end with these hockey 13.43 grain uh, pellets. So I've got my chronograph set up right here. Pretty windy, so I wanted to do some target shooting, but conditions aren't good for that. So let's commence with the chronograph testing. Okay, so we'll start off with the three six with the three six seven and as a 22 caliber, so it's saying up to 700 FPS with lead pellets. And then it gives you a breakdown. I'm not sure, oh, that's with alloy. So we'll, uh, we'll we're just gonna test at eight, eight pumps and we'll see what we come in with. Okay, looks like I've got a good setup here that it's gonna read things. So our first test will be with these H&N uh, Excite hammers, and they are 7.87 grain. Eight pumps. Try not to shoot my chronograph like I did before. 771. Next test, we will do the Crossman Brown Box 10.5 grain premieres. 702. The heavier pellet definitely dropped. Last test will be these hockey 13.43 grain. Look kind of more like a slug, but uh, they're kind of pellet shaped. Cylindrical. I actually found her to be somewhat accurate at close range. Here we go. 629. All right. So that is the 367. So Benjamin 397 starting off with these Excite hammers. We can pump the, this new style Benjamin up 10 times. Okay, let's get this guy lined up. Here we go. 774. All right, next one will be the Crossman Brown Box 10.5 premieres. And these have worked just amazingly well in my 397. They're my pallet of choice. 694. All right. And finally, we will test the hockey 13.43 grain. And you can tell they're like cylindrical. Um, let's see how they do. Here we go. 621. Okay. So then reviewing the results from the first test. The 367 was at 771.4 feet per second with a 7.87 grain Excite hammer, which worked out to 10.4 foot pounds of energy. Where the Benjamin 397 were at 774.9, 10.5 foot pounds. 
Then we go down to the Crossman Premier 10.5 grain pellet. We're at 702.9 for the 367 and then 694 for the 397. And I only did one shot for each, you know, so I didn't, uh, I didn't want to spend, I just wanted to get an idea. I wasn't wanting to spend a whole bunch of time on this. And anyway, so there's your energy, a little bit more energy with the 367. And then with the Hockey Thunders, 13.43 grain. It's the heaviest 177 caliber pellet I have. 629.2 feet per second and 11.81 foot pounds. So it's almost that 12 foot pounds, which I think is the limit in Europe and Canada. And then the uh, 397 with 621.7 feet per second at 11.5 foot pounds of energy. So it's like, well, how, how does that compare to the 362? And so then I went and reviewed um, Corinna results from Off the Shelf Air Guns YouTube channel. He did a nice job. He had a, pretty sure it was a brand new 362 22 caliber, the original version. And shooting cross repair hollow points. He did three shots. The average of those was 667 feet per second, and it was 14.13 foot pounds. So I'm kind of thinking that. My gun, I've been shooting this thing for uh, over a year now because I like it so much and maybe it's got some wear on it because this one I got this spring. So maybe I'll have to do some more to this. But overall guys, I don't know. I mean, I'm putting a lot of time into this gun and I, I does it make economic sense? No, not probably, no, it really, I don't think it does because that gun, the only thing with that I had to do, I wanted to have a nice scope. I bought the Baker scope mount, which was like 50 bucks. The scope and rings, that's to me subjective. Whatever you want to buy, blah, blah, blah. But to have it mounted correctly, you needed this mount. But one of these, you know, you're looking at 50 some odd dollars for steel breech and then a barrel, you know, that could be 50 bucks. Kind of depends on where you find a barrel. Um, I don't know. It's kind of like what I have into this now. Um, it's pretty much equivalent for pricing, I guess. Uh, plus, they don't make a 177. So, I don't know. I'm having a really fun time modifying this and doing things with it. But accuracy right now, and I, I, it's been too windy for me to get good results today. But right now I'm getting way better results with my 397 and I'm starting to wonder, I hate to already go down that road, but I'm starting to wonder. I've tried this, the reason I went with the longer barrel is because I wasn't having good luck with the 24 inch barrel I put on it. And now I think I'm going to try to polish the barrel and learn about how to do that. But there's just, I don't know, there's part of me, because I can, I'm just wondering if they were just way smarter back then in the barrel is completely solid or soldered to the tube. There's no movement here, this whole assembly. Where this, you have two screws holding it here. This is a solid where it mounts here, but actually this breech has three screws, but this, I ended up putting a bigger screw in there because the stock one stripped out and I've tried to shoot it without the screw so it would flow. I, it works better being tightened down and I don't know, I'm wondering if, this is never going to be as accurate as that, but hopefully that's my goal. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video, um, and I can edit so it's not so long. So anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.